Listen up, anglers. This week we have great reports on crappie and bass in your favorite freshwater fishing hole. And if you're a saltwater guy or gal, our guys are standing by to give you a few secrets on how to catch more and bigger trout. This is the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Welcome back to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy, and we hope you all had a great Memorial Day weekend. Today, Rick, we've got some hot reports coming from our guides and captains carrying us through the end of May, which I cannot believe. Another month has come and gone. It's How, crazy. I mean, where does the time go? I have no idea. Hopefully into fishing. Yeah. Well, I sure <laughs> hope everybody got a lot of great fishing in this past weekend. I know I certainly did. Yeah, me too. Dave, did you get some fishing in this weekend? I did not. It rained. It, it rained, rained. It rained. It rained. It rained. And I'm, you know, I like myself a lot, so I don't go out in the rain. Oh, come on. I'd, I'd It'd be melt. fun. I'd melt. It's a challenge. Sugar melts, baby. <laughs> That's right. That's it. All right. Well, getting us started on Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn in the Star Tron Middle Fresh region is your trusty guide, Matt Losher. How are you feeling about the end of May, Matt? I'm feeling great about it, Bree. We have had some crazy weather. We've had a lot of rain, um, but the fish are feeding like crazy you know they're they're doing their post spawn early summer kind of feed packing on the pounds so life's pretty good over here in the middle fresh region we've been catching them um i'm going to start out with the crappie because they're just red hot at toledo bend right now they're really hot topic uh they're set up in about 15 to 30 foot of water around the vertical cover the crappie likes the standing up stuff uh so bridges are producing fish uh suspended around the piling and the standing timber, which Toledo Bend is full of, is also good. The fish are suspending about 8 to 15 down, and they're still really aggressive. So I'm throwing that panfish assassin jig every time I get an opportunity. It's just too much fun. Monkey milk on the clear days, and electric chicken when the clouds move in or the water is dirty from some of that recent rain usually gets the job done. And then, of course, the old trusty minnow always works as well. I've got a photo here for you to show you some of the big slabs we've been catching. Some of my favorite folks, the Dormans there, uh, holding up some real nice slab crappie we caught this week. Uh, we've been catching some really good fish. It's been a lot of fun. That looks good, bud. What else you got? So on Sam Rabin, uh, they're catching a lot of crappie as well. But I'm getting reports of them shallow around the grass and then deeper around the brush also. And then there's that 147 bridge that gives up a lot of crappie too. So they're kind of spread out over there. You can find them in a wide variety of depths and cover types, but nonetheless, they're catching a lot of. So it's good over there as well. And then jumping over to the bass, uh, Sam Rayburn's really hot for them right now too. They're still going crazy over topwater baits and baits that are kind of near surface baits, like a swim jig has produced a lot of fish over there lately around the grass and brush. And the important thing there is just to keep moving and covering water on that lake right now until you find the fish because they're moving around a lot, but they're feeding, so it's good. And you can cover a lot of water easily with the top water baits and the swim jig, so it works out great. And then for Lita Bend, the bite is still good shallow and offshore. Uh, it's kind of a toss up as to which is better right now. Um, big ones are a little bit tough to come by, but numbers are great right now, especially in that 10 to 20 foot range around the congregations of Shad. Crankbaits are still best for me right now, uh, getting those schools of fish fired up and catching them fast on that crankbait. But then the Texas rig bass assassin worm in a green pumpkin color is also great. I usually start with the crankbait and kind of get all I can get, get them fired up and catch them fast. And then once they kind of slow down, I play clean up with that worm. You get a few extra bites with that worm after they quit the crankbait. And then down on Lake Buchanan, my buddy Jared Poole is really dropping the hammer on some good bass right now with a buzz bait in the morning. And then later he's switching over to a deep diving crankbait out on the points in the deeper flat. And Jared just won a tournament on Buchanan this past weekend. So I want to send out a congratulations to him for that win. And I got a photo of him here with a, a nice bass he caught uh, to send him congratulations his way. Nice. And then also uh, Jared's been catching a bunch of fish on Lake LBJ. He said that the frog bite has been going good early in the morning over there. And then once the sun gets up, he's using a Texas rig craw or a worm and a brush and around rock piles to catch them. And then lastly, uh, touching on the white and the yellow bass, they're kind of hanging out together right now. And they're ganging up really good on Toledo Bend, a little deeper than they have been. 
Uh, they're out to about 15 to 25 foot of water right now. And live minnows held right off the bottom, tight line are great for catching them, as well as jigging spoons throughout the day. And then in the evenings, real late, right before dark, they'll come straight up close to the surface and they might even give you a little school in action on a topwater plug right before dark. So get in on some of that fun. All right. Well, thank you. Great report uh, from the Middle Fresh Startron region. Matt says that the hot spots are going to be crappie or biting good on Toledo Bend in 15 to 30 feet and at Sam Rayburn, shallow and deep. And the bass are on topwater baits early and crankbaits or worms during the day. And then those white bass are fair in 15 to 25 feet of water. All right, well, the seasons are changing for us in the Alvey Reels Middle Coast region, so let's get Captain Bink Grimes on the line and hear all about those fish catching feels. Hey, it's almost June, and June is probably my favorite time of the year to fish. Uh, it kicks off our fishing in the surf. Uh, we live for it. We live for the surf fishing. When the gulf is right, the green tides creep to the beach. Uh, our motto boats and four by four trucks hit the beach armed with plugs and, and plastics. Uh, it's always the bigger trout. We catch the bigger trout this time of year in the surf, some up to five, six, seven pounds. We look forward to those calm days in June. We're getting that this week because uh, we're, we're gonna wade the Mid Bay Reefs in East Matagorda Bay as well. Spots like Droll's Lump, Three Beacon Reef, Long Reef, Barefoot, Half Moon are all players on, uh, you know, Bass Assassins, Mirror Lures, and, uh, and she dogs. This month is good also with incoming tides in the morning. Uh, it, it pushes a lot of that bait over the sand and grass flats in West Matagorda Bay. Those fish start slicking up. We slide behind those slicks and wade right behind them, throw top waters and, and soft plastics. Then spots like the Hump and the Cedars and Port O'Connor are my favorite places. Uh, it's a long 32 mile run from, from my harbor in Matagorda, but it's worth the ride. Uh, some of the best top water action I've experienced in over 20 years. Be aware, though, there are lots of bull sharks around. For those who choose to stay in a boat this time of year, uh, the deep reefs are, are great this, this month. A bait of choice if when we're in a boat, uh, live shrimp under a mid-coast popping cork. We like to throw plastics all the time, but when that water temperature gets to 80 to 85 degrees as it's getting right now, you catch trout 10 to 1 drifting out of the boat uh, with a live shrimp compared to uh, plastics. Then in Half Moon Reef in West Matagorda Bay, it's been on fire, the 54-acre reef is you know it was built by the nature conservancy it's like fishing a six to seven foot uh, underwater jetty uh, i can't tell you how many times we go out there and just uh, you know in a matter of cast finish our day off the key to fishing it is when the winds are five to ten knots which they are all this week rockport anglers have found trout around super flats and allen's bite on small top waters and bass assassins then the east flats around uh, port aransas have been good on the incoming tide on the same bait, chicken on a chain, uh, morning glory bass assassins. Photo there, big trout continue to roam the uh, deep shell in East Matagorda Bay. We ask you to take care of our trophy stocks. We've got a really, really precious resource. We ask you to gently release them back. I mean, I, I said it a couple of weeks ago, I went on a 10 day stretch where I caught at least one trout over six pounds every day. And last week, you know, it was almost the same. So we we've got a great fishery here. Inshore redfish, uh, a lot of anglers uh, with gear chasing redfish uh, with, the, with the high winds that we've had. Of course, it's going to be calm this week, so uh, you know everything's a player. There are a lot of undersized fish in the diversion channel along the Colorado River. Uh, in Freeport, the Surfside and Quintana jetties are holding lots of slot reds and bull reds on mullet, crab, and, uh, and shrimp. And those reefs and bass drop and chocolate bays uh, have a mix of rat reds and keepers. The Port O'Connor jetty, uh, is best uh, while you know for uh, for big bull reds right now on crabs and mullet. Then flats off Soleria Bio and the channels adjacent have been good on uh, on shrimp imitations. Guide uh, Lynn Smith said he's make, been making long drifts on that incoming tide in the back lakes and tossing top waters for redfish. Uh, it, it's kind of been an up and down battle for the redfish, but we're getting our really good tides back, and, and captains ought to figure out the pattern by then. Uh, offshore, hey, Red Snapper opens here in federal waters June the 1st. There's some large concentration of snapper in 40 foot of water. Don't be surprised to see multiple 20 pounders uh, hit the dock. There are a lot, a lot of great fish out there. Uh, guide Michael Quebec and Hunter Saha, they, they found great swordfish action off the coast on the hilltops uh, in about 80 miles out. Then our tarpon are starting to show along the beach. Uh, 
especially around the Fort O'Connor jetty, and, and more poons will, will appear as the uh, summer progresses. All right, thank you so much, Bink. Great report from the Alvey Middle Coast region. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the hot spots. Bink says the trout are good while waiting flats near Port O'Connor on small top dogs and bass assassins. And then the redfish are fair to go at the Port Aransas Jetty on shad and table shrimp, Bree. Summertime sure is looking good. Yeah, man. All right, coming up next on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, we're seeing what we're hooking up to in the upper fresh region. But I know Dave Farrell at the workbench is reeling and ready to go for rigs and techniques. Dave. Well, somebody died and left me king cranky because we're going to be talking about <laughs> crankbaits tonight. Woo -woo. <laughs> How to catch Looks those bass on a crankbait. There you we'll go. Be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Casa Vieja Lodge. Five-star angling in beautiful Guatemala. Garmin. Join the club. Sportsman's Adventures. Fishing for adventure. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats. Eat. Sleep. Fish. Reliability. Yamaha is known for it. And it's something boaters value because these days, few things are built to last. When we find something that is, we hold on to friendships, traditions, outboards, because every second on the water is sacred. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters choose Yamaha for the long run, for life, because reliability starts here. Remember the glory days of gasoline? It's just not made the same anymore. Kick your gas into gear with StarTron. Pump up the performance in all of your engines. Cure the problems of ethanol with the power of enzymes. And maximize your mileage every time you drive. Kickstart your engines with StarTron. For the bay and beyond. Team up with the best and rule the bay in a Skeeter. Proven with 19 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards. And right now, through June 20th, you can save with summer sizzling rebates of up to 2,500. Versatility, control, performance, and design. Visit your local Skeeter dealer or online at SkeeterBoats.com. Skeeter, it's more than a boat, it's a lifestyle. Have you ever felt your heart pounding while feeling the power of a tarpon in the Florida Keys? Or experience the changing colors of a mahi as you bring it on board? Whether it's in the Bahamas, the Florida Keys, Guatemala, or the Florida Everglades, Murphy's Law Sports Fishing has the ability to guide you to the fish of a lifetime. To book your trip today, call 305-246-0673 or go to murphyslawsportfishing.com. Well, the rigs and techniques takes place here at the workbench every single week, and this is no different. Dave, we're going to talk a little bit about Cranky. Yeah, you know, uh, it's a very versatile bait. You know, uh, you can use them for do doing a lot of different things. You can fish them in shallow water. You can fish them in really deep water, you know, depending on, on, the, on the crankbait. And they work all types of, all times of the year. You know, what's very important, there's, every, there's several things that can, can determine how deep you fish these things. So first off, you want to figure out where the fish are. Right. You know, if they're, are they in shallow water? Are they in mid depth or are they in deep? And then you want to go from there. Now, if they're in real shallow water, usually in the you know spring, obviously, and uh, in the fall, they get up into real shallow water. You might want to use the shallowest kind of uh, crankbaits they have, which are called square bills. And, you know, you can look at any any of these baits and tell what they're going to do by looking at the face of the bait. If they have a really short bill, obviously this one has a square bill, the square across the front is why it's called a square bill. But if it's a short bill and it's got a pretty good, really hard angle going down, that means that the bait is, is going to tip its head down and not go very deep. It's going to be a shallow and it's going to have a wobble. Real it's not tight wobble. Not as tight, actually. It not will as tight. the whole bait will wobble versus a one with a deep plug will will shimmy more. Shimmy. This one will wobble. It will actually shimmy, the shimmy. whole bait. If, plus plus these wobble. these these little square bills are normally short, 
They're really a short crankbait. They're smaller generally, and, and that's mainly because the, most of the time the fish that are f up in the shallow water are f chasing smaller baits. Right. So you're going to be wanting to use smaller stuff. And this one, uh, a lot of times they'll be up in that shallow water chasing crawdads too. So a lot of reds and greens, dark greens and browns will work when you're throwing a crankbait up in the shallow water. This because that's what they're... This is mimicking a shad. And that one's mimicking a shad because they'll be little in the spring. Right. They'll be small. So that's their... You know, you'll be using smaller crankbaits to get those bait, the fish that are up in the real shallow water when they're on the spawn. All right, or in so the after fall the fish have moved out off of the shallow, now what? Well, you can get into medium, you get to medium depths, you know, the, like these ones here, and you can see that these plugs, <clears throat> they're, they're a little longer and they have a, a longer bill on them, and it's a round bill, obviously. And what that do is when you, the further, the further this thing is closer to the bait, the deeper it will go, believe it or not. Uh -huh. uh, when the when the tie is out here on the end, it will stay shallower. Because so, the pull point is <clears throat> from out here correct. instead of in here. Correct, so the Got tighter it. it gets to the nose, that means you can just take a look at that thing and say, okay, that one's gonna go a little deeper than this other one, because they're about the same size, and you know, if one's not weighted and one's weighted, that has a lot to do with it too. You know, if you have a weight in the bait and gets it a little deeper right when it sinks, it helps it out, obviously. Some of these don't have any weights at all. but. Another big th thing that comes into play is how long you can cast. Yes. You know, because when you're wanting these deep ones especially, not so important with the square bills in shallow water, but when you're using in the mid depths and the deep water, the longer a cast you can make gives that bait time to reach that depth that it's supposed to be working at. Right. You know, 14 feet down to 20 feet, you probably aren't going to be cranking much deeper than that. And, but you're going to want that thing, you're going to have to throw a long cast like a third of your cast is going to be cranking to get it down to where it is and then you're going to have a third of the cast where it's in the zone and then the last third is it's going to be coming back up to you. You're, you're reeling upwards. Exactly. Like so you've yeah. got to worry about that third of in the middle. You right. know, that's where you want to be. That's where your crankbait needs to be on top of the fish that you're marking in that deep water or whatever. So, you know, that's what you and and, and, and if you are having a trouble getting deep Go lighter line. Your, your line, the test strength of your line can make a huge difference on how big your baits go. The difference between 12 and 20, you know, is a, is a, a good amount. It's is probably eight. four or five feet, you know, literally. Because, <laughs> and you also, when you're wanting to use, get out there and use model filament, because it has a nice stretch. When you're cranking crankbaits, they're made to cover ground. You're made to go real fast, especially those little square bills, because when they bounce off stuff, they won't get hung up. So a, a good monofilament is good to use because you have a lot of stretch in it. Now it doesn't have as, as good a, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't have stretch, but it doesn't, you don't feel, it's not as sensitive as like a braid or fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon actually sinks, so that can actually get you some extra depth. If you're using monofilament and you're not getting deep enough, switch to all fluorocarbon line right. or braided line. Braided line, the only bad thing about fluoro and braid when you're using crankbaits, because you're cranking along pretty fast, you can pull a lot of hooks. Because fluoro or braid don't stretch. Fluoro stretches more than braid, but braid doesn't stretch at all. Right. You'll feel every little tick when he eats it, right. but you have a good chance of pulling the, the hooks right out of so the, their face. I have a technical face. question for you, and sure. this is the rigs and techniques. A lot of times these baits, these would be considered like a four or a six when you see it on the box. Mm -hmm. And then this could be a 16 or a 20. Yeah. That is a rating for the depth of water that it potentially could and should reach and be fished at. On, the, on light line. On you know, light they, line. Because they, they, you gotta figure those guys are trying to get, for that rating on the box, they're probably dragging it on the lightest line they can to get it as deep as it'll go. Because they can say, oh, okay, you pull this on eight pound test, it'll get down to 20 feet I know feet when I whatever. was fishing the jetties in those redfish tournaments, we would tr pull 16s and 20s and hope that it would hit off of a rock yeah. right where the jetty started to slope out. Contact you know? with the bottom is very important Deflection. with a lot of these. Exactly. When they're when they're digging and digging, they'll be either stuff, you know, making a big puff in the sand or bouncing off a rock or bouncing off a, you know, ricocheting off a log or whatever. That's usually when they get smacked because those fish will be hot, holding really tight to that structure a lot of times. And the closer you can get that crankbait. I mean, you look at all those treble hooks and you think, "Man, 
there's no way I'm gonna throw that in there. But if you use one of those square bills, they're made to go into that real shallow water and that deep color. And deflect cover. off of Yeah, you, you don't really wanna use those those diving plugs and that stuff, because they will. They'll dig in there and get you get you hung up. Now, I like I like to in places where there's a lot of minnows and stuff like that, I like to use these long cranks. Right. And I troll these a lot sometimes to find out where the bass are. I'll troll a couple of these out real slow until I get a couple of hits. And boom, I'll spin around and start casting. All right, Bree, what do you think wow. about all that? We're cranky you over here, You two are man. extra cranky today. <laughs> Yay! That's the cranky I, I love. There you go. All right. Everyone loves a good frog bite, and that's just what you're going to get on Lake Fork in the Upper Fresh region. So let's listen up to Johnny Geist to see what else we have to look forward to for the weekend. Hello, Bree. Uh, the black bass here on Lake Fork this week, they're still being caught mainly in the shallow to the mid-depth water levels. We've had some heavy rains and some real cool mornings and they kept these bass shallower much longer than usual for this time of year. Uh, several big bass were caught this week though and the numbers are also starting to improve. Uh, Fork received about a five inch rain, the water's on the rise and they got the gates open. So, hey, the bluegills are also bedding up and this is probably why this frog bite's been so good this week. The big bass, they like to patrol the brim beds and feed on the brim as they start to guard their nest. A hollow body frog is the excellent bait to fish around the brim beds because that's where the bass hide out in the weed patches and lily pads as they ambush the spawning bluegills. What makes that uh, frog so effective is the weedless nature of the lure. It can be fished cleanly through that heavy cover. Uh, a hollow body frog, it's got two large hooks that lay flat on the top of that soft plastic frog body and it keeps it from getting hung up. So since that frog's hollow made of soft plastic, when the lure collapses, when a bass finally hits the frog, and the bass usually gets hooked in the roof of the mouth. It's a real good hookup ratio. Some frogs have a pointed nose and can be retrieved in a fast walk the dog type of retrieve. A white one works good for the shad respawn, uh, when the shad are spawning. Other frogs have a flat mouth and can be uh, slowly popped along in heavy cover, but most frogs are very realistic in appearance. They look just like a frog, and that's also a good source for a food source for bass. Frog fishing can be very exciting and very effective here. Most of the lures, uh, there are several, as most of the lures, there are several ways to fish them, but as long as you're working them in heavy cover, you may get bit at any time, and that's usually when it happens, when you least expect it. So be sure to try it and wait until you feel the bass before you set the hook, because many times when a bass hits a frog, they get the weeds and debris in their mouth at the same time and then they'll exhale the debris out and if they got their mouth open the frog will come out and you'll miss that bite so just wait until you feel the fish move and set the hook hard and usually you've got him on uh, another lake fork guy buddy of mine had a great week uh, johnny glass he shared these two big bass pictures with us for our viewers as you can see one of them's got a frog right there in his mouth and those are some pretty nice bass yes sir two pictures of those well, that wasn't enough. Then old Johnny had to go out and catch something by himself. Look at this 11 pound, four ounce lunker he caught on a crawfish type bait himself. So good job, Johnny G, and he's catching on four. Sound like the Johnny G's out there in that part of the country are just hot stuff. What do you think about that, bub? I call him Johnny G number two. <laughs> hey, the lake crappie, uh, man, I've been catching some tremendous crappie this week. Uh, large schools of crappie, they've moved. Uh, out on the brush piles, started ganging up on parallel timber. Uh, the brush piles seem to hold a little bit smaller crappie than the uh, natural lay down logs and broken off treetops, but boy, they can't hide from my Garmin live scope. It's the most valuable tool to my boat at this time, and it makes it easy to locate these schools of crappie. I set that forward distance out to about 50 to 60 feet. I start scanning, it's like hunting. You just start scanning for concentrations of crappie. Be sure you search into the wind just like hunting, so you can hit the spotlight once you find the crappie. Uh, position that boat out to about 10 to 15 feet uh, downwind from the school. That way the spotlight holds that boat right in position. And man, that new Garmin force troll motor, not only powerful, but it's very quiet too. So uh, that brushless motor, it, it doesn't spook the fish as much and the spotlight feature holds very tight. So you, we used catching these uh, crappie on both minnows and jigs, and many times the combination of the jig with the minnow attached to it works better than anything else. So here's some pictures of some happy customers I had this week holding up some pretty nice size Lake Fork crappie, and uh, they went home with a mess of fillets. So, well, 
The other species I'm going to cover tonight, the white bass on fork. I don't know where these white bass have been. I thought they'd all got out of the lake, went over the dam or something, but hadn't found them since last summer. But boy, they're back now and they're showing up in large numbers. The sand bass are hitting one ounce slabs best and they're fun to catch on light tackle. Usually when you find the whites, they're all bunched up and they're feeding heavily on the thread fin shad, so a silver shad colored slab is the best. It's not uncommon to catch the whites on almost every cast and you'll need to be quick on the hook set because the schooner whites, they can, they can strike the slab and blow it back out before you even know you had a bite if you don't keep all that slack out of your line. So just throw it out, let it hit the bottom, pop it or flutter it off the bottom of the slab will fall back down and be sure you stay in contact with it and that's when you get the bite. Our customers enjoyed watching that on the live scope. I mean, we're watching it two or 300 white bass right under the boat and it's amazing how many are hitting his bait and he never knows he's got a bite, but the action keeps him engaged. So uh, Garmin's uh, works great on the white bass as well. Hey, June should be an exciting month for big bass here on Lake Fork. Hope to see some of our viewers on the lake this weekend. Tight lines, everybody. All right, thank you so much, Johnny. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the hot spots from the Upper Fresh region. Johnny says that Lake Fork, the big bass are biting on frogs in the grass and the lily pads. Also hitting jigs and crankbaits in eight to 12 feet of water. And the crappie, excellent on minnows and jigs. And don't forget about those white bass hitting silver slabs in 25. And look for the top water action to heat up this week, Brie. I love top water action. Yes, you Favorite. Do. All right, we want to remind you about the Yamaha Spring Savings Sales event going on now through June 15th. Your savings could include up to $500 in dealer credit for 2.5 to 75 HP models, two extra years of warranty for 90 to 300 models, and one extra year of warranty on 350 models. So for more details on how you can save, go to yamahaoutboards.com. Everyone could use a bit of savings right now. Absolutely. In Absolutely. All right, when we come back on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, we're headed to the Fish Bites Upper Coast and Garmin Lower Coast regions, so stay hooked. And remember to keep up with everything fishing in Texas. Visit our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow and tag us in your photos on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page Page, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll be right back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Contender Boats, always in the game, Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin, the best lures, period, Alvy Reels, a better way to fish, and Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. An entirely new species of extreme predator is moving offshore. The Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO offshore outboard. Extreme big block thrust and power in the industry's first direct injection four stroke. Quiet, efficient, powerful, and proven Yamaha reliability. More than an outboard, it's a fully integrated power system. The all-new Yamaha V8 XTO Offshore. Why is Casa Vieja Lodge on everyone's bucket list? Left teaser! Left here. Left flat as well, two fish! They're everywhere! Right flat teaser as well! Right, left flat, right flat teaser! to Casa Vieja Lodge and check it off your list. Finding a shoreline is easy. Finding a sure thing is not. For over 20 years, anglers from Kitty Hawk to California and every shore in between have come to know one thing. That nothing says no to fish bites. So just stop with the fishing and get busy with the catching. Ask for Fish Bites or Fish Bites Fight Club Lures or visit fishbites.com.
power pole tip, we're talking in wireless remote controls. The power pole comes out of the box with two remote controls, a wireless key fob and a wireless dash switch. This dash switch is very smart. It has the ability to operate both power poles. If you have duals, you can operate your left one or your right one or both together. It also has this little speedometer here to change the poles from fast, medium, and slow depending on your fishing situation. As always, all our remote controls have auto deployment up and down. If you double tap any remote control, the pole will automatically come up or double tap the down button and it'll go automatically down. We added a new feature to the Sea Monster app. If you go into system configuration and you hit your remote controls, you can scroll up, change any of those remotes from a double tap to a single tap, which is really nice and fast when you're out on the water. That's your power pull tip. I love all that electronic stuff. That's, that's real nice to have at your fingertips. I'm sure you do. Okay, well, we've got some good inshore and offshore variety coming at you in the Fish Bites Upper Coast region for the weekend. So let's listen up to Captain Carl Weston while I just go beat you up a little bit. Okay, Tell us all about it, bring Carl. It. Hey, guys and gals. Well, today we're going to start out over in Sabine Lake, where the water is still stained, but the temps are right on target at around 78 to 80 degrees. degrees. The, the trout are hanging tight around the oyster reefs and along the shorelines, but they're still hitting hard on live bait. We're catching them on topwater hard bait. Had a bass assassin, say, four inch shrimp cocktail. Finished off with an eighth to a quarter ounce jig head is really getting the job done this week also. Uh, the, the incoming tide has been pushing bait into the grass around West Galveston Bay with that steady east wind we've had for the past week. Uh, the birds are working on these bait schools and will be your best friend when you're scouting here. Uh, the trout are being caught along the jetties also. They're moving out towards the surf now. And over in East Galveston Bay, the wade fishing is still really hot on topwaters and live shrimp. And we have a picture of a nice stringer of trout here today. So uh, moving on to Trinity Bay, the Looking. flounder bite is staying really steady along the rocks, guys. Fishing these flatties with a live bait rig, such as small mullet or mud minnows, has produced really good results. Getting on over to Texas City, the fishing has been great along the jetties using the same live bait choices. The incoming tide has been a ticket over there. And there's been some really nice flatties running the channel edges and the cuts heading back out into deep water. So look for the schools of small shad and mullet working along the rocks and jetties. These flounder have been following this bait That'll help you tighten your target area a bit. And always remember when you're fishing flounder, you know, bump your bait along the bottom and get ready to set the hook because they, they can be some little bait robbers. And uh, today I have a picture of uh, my custom rod builder, JT, with a nice flatty. Nice. I love the stance, it's good. All right, let's go moving offshore, bub. Okay, moving offshore. Uh, the deep water rigs are holding some good tuna this year. East and West Cervasa rigs have been steady, a good steady night bite for blackfin. Then as we're heading out further towards Boombang and Nansen, which are in the 125 mile range out of Galveston, these two spots have produced some really good catches of both yellowfin and blackfin this season. Uh, chunking is my preferred method. You know, where you chop up sardines or cigar minutes into small pieces, drift them out in the water. You want to drift a larger chunk on a free line I had to say a six, five or six side hot live bait hook, heavy hook. We use about four foot of fluorocarbon leader and attach this to your main line with a blood knot. Simply drift your bait back into the cut chunks and hold on. Usually the black fin will show up first, but when the yellow fin show up, the clean up, just hang on. And uh, I think we have a picture here today of a little tuna run with some black fin that day. Oh, nice. Happy crew. All right. Is that Nick in that picture? Uh, unfortunately, yes, that is Nick. <laughs> oh, boy. Tell that boy to put on a shirt next time. We don't want to see all his ink. All right. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about the AJ, okay, bud. Amber, uh, Amber Jack, Rick. Um, as our early season winds down, which we'll, we'll close at the end of the month, the weather, the weather has not been very friendly, but the fish have been hungry when the seas are permitted to get out into that deep water. We've been seeing some really big fish this month. Live bait by far has been the payoff for larger fish. I like to tie about a four foot rig with AJ's using a 300 pound test leader 
I use an 18 aught circle C hook. Uh, your weight of your choice will be depending on current or depth. If I'm fishing in the three to 500 foot range and the current's less than a knot, I'll use about three pounds of weight to get me down there. And if the current and wind picks up, I might go as high as four to five pounds of weight so you can get to the spot before your boat drifts off. Um, remember, fighting this fish is a blast on lighter tackle, but if you're fishing structure or you want bigger fish, you, you better uh, he heavy up on your tackle or they'll just break your stuff. And we got a picture today of Natasha and I with Amberjack. We had fun fighting last year. All right. Hey, nice. so I got a question for you. You know, Bree's coming out there to fish with Natasha in the Wahoo tournament. So we're wondering, right? We wonder. We wonder. We wonder. What do you wonder? We wonder if the Wahoos have showed up and how that's looking for us, Carl. Well, actually, this tournament, Rick, is going to be a three fish tournament. The Wahoo are still in, but in this tournament, and I haven't sent you the paperwork yet, but uh, it is a three fish combo. It's going to be actually Cobia, Dorado, and Kingfish. So it'll be a combination of those three fish combined weight. Oh, okay. Didn't get you that information yet, but that's that's the uh, layout of that tournament, guys. All right. Well, I guess I misunderstood when I thought I was called the Wahoo something tournament. So. It's okay. That's why I'm going. <sighs> that's it. <laughs> you know, everybody can't be as smart as Bree sometimes. No. But it is time for the Mirror Lure Hotspots from the Upper Coast region, so we got to go. All right, buddy, inshore, fishing for flounder over the rocks and along the jetties on mud minnows. Fish bite in the shrimp flavor will also work as well uh, with a half ounce jig. And then offshore, chunk in for tunas at the deeper water rigs using cut shad, cigar minnows, sardines on fluorocarbon leader, those minnows. I, okay, well, I did know it was Dorado Cobia and I did, I thought it was Kingfish, but, or no, I thought it was Wahoo. So oh, wow. we were on the same page there. But, well, the you whole know. logo has a Wahoo, so I thought it was just a Wahoo tournament. My bad for assumption. Oh, bad. All right, well, yep. we'll see soon. Come on. All right, let's head south to the Garmin <laughs> Lower Coast region where we're catching everything from trout to redfish inshore and snapper to marlin offshore. This is sounding too good to be true, Chad, so give us the weekend skinny. Tell you what, the weather's forecast is looking great for the weekend. The fishing's really going to start popping, so we'll have a lot more offshore stuff going on also with the weather, breaking the weather. But starting with the inshore, though, bait fishing's been really, really good in the north land cut. So you guys can access this easily from our, my northern part, from the Corpus Christi, Baffin area, south from Mansfield, hip north. But the north land cut is really go good. We're throwing some mirror lure topwaters early, then some saltwater assassins later in the day on the drop-offs and some closer uh, up to the banks there. Some redfish have been moving in there also. So starting with the trout again, up there, the fishing, like I said, has been really good. We've been throwing some mirror lure waters, mirror lure top waters early there, right around the grass beds and drop offs. You get some guts that are running through there, and those grass beds will go from that one, two foot area, you know, onto that eight, nine drop off like that, up in that land cut. Um, like I said, you come from Corpus Christi, uh, Baffin, from down here, you work up there like that. You can work the edges, or you can hit nine mile hole up there if you come from Corpus. Nine mile hole has been really good. Try that uh, pink mirror lure she dog early that's been working really really good we're getting some calmer winds especially so i'd definitely get that in your arsenal and uh switch layer to some soft plastics like the saltwater assassins chicken on the chain climbing chicken they've been working really really well uh rig that with like an eighth ounce jig head and uh, about a 20 25 pound fluorocarbon memory leader works good and work those drop-offs i like doing that too if you get a gut right there or a drop off power pole down along those edges and those guts and you can kind of drift right through there and, and power pole down work all those edges through there in the weed beds and stuff like that, and those trout have been good. And there's been some good, good solid trout. We got a picture here. Normally, I do some singles and stuff like that, but we got a, a good limited trout. The guys had a blast. You can see they're all 17 to 22 inch fish there. Nice. All right, tell yeah, us so about the redfish, bud. Moving over the redfish, still up in the land cut. Um, they haven't shown up in the flats down here, so I've been running all over, but up in the land cut, they're working there also. So when you're done with your trout fish and the sun comes up, hit those edges, look at the shallow flats. Up closer to the bank, there's a, that wind and stuff will push that bait up to the bank. Look for some, uh, you know, mullet and stuff like that up there. So early with this calmer wind coming up too, I'd go with the mirror lure topwater early. And then you also get a gold spoon and cast right up on the edge of the bank and rip that gold spoon to a quick uh, retrieve right through. They'll get some good blow ups and some good hits on that. Uh, another thing, uh, the bait, they've been hitting some uh, bait and stuff like that. If y'all like using bait, go some cut mullet, uh, men hay and stuff like that, fish drop offs. Um, you can do that, and also if I've been using like a five to seven on eagle claw kale hook on that too. Just, just pin it real, real thin, and right through the barb shows, you'll get a better hook set on that stuff. Also, what some guys do, if you want to, if you want to throw your top waters for soft plastics, power pole down in the gut, 
work those edges with your plastics and then throw your bait out the back on the dish right there. So you kind of you kind of got the redfish action going and the uh, and the trout. So heading over to the offshore, offshore is really going to start turning on the, the state water snapper fishing is remaining excellent. And out deeper on around the 100 fathom curve and floater rigs, uh, there's been some good billfish action. But I expect there's some really good stuff coming up this weekend, like I said, with the weather forecast. So state water snapper fishing remaining really excellent. Um, get some fresh frozen bait. Um, if you get some squid, menhaden, cigar minnows, where you guys can get a hold of, the fresher the better. Um, it works really good. Uh, try some double drop rigs, uh, some eager claw circle hooks. I've been using about 10 out to 13 out in size. I've been using Mamoy mono leader. They're about 130 to 150 pound. And the reason I'm using the 130 to 150, um, some guys like using it lighter, but it's going to keep the abrasion down. And also, the main thing, it really helps your cuts in your hands. We do a little double wrap. <laughs> and you're bringing the fish aboard the side, it ain't gonna caught, get caught between your fingers and slice you. That 130, 150 will help out all that. I'm working on that. And then uh, also state water snapper season, like it's open four year, open year round, four per person and stuff like that. Federal waters is gonna be opening up, which will be starting June 1st here and you'll be go to two per person. So moving on to the billfish, it's been it's been some good reports all over. I talked to some guys in Port A, South Padre Island, some guys here in Mansfield, so hitting all the jetties and stuff. They're getting out to like the 100 fathom curve and deeper. And what I'd like to do is pre-rig the night before, get your Islanders lure ready, rigging with some ballyhoo, and rig up, try to start maybe the 150 pound or more leaders up to 400 pound, depends what you're really targeting and stuff like that. If you're going for blues, you know, whites and stuff like that, mono sales, you can go lighter on that mono. Now pull your baits about seven and a half to eight knots, and uh, I would definitely look for some rips or temperature uh, breaks and stuff like that. Your Garmin sounder will definitely help you out with that. It'll have a, you should have a you know thermocline on there, you'll be able to look at that and also look at bait balls and everything else on there. And uh, put your Islanders on the riggers and the shotgun and then your chuggers and super plungers on your flat line and stuff like that. And uh, if you haven't done it yet, I just did recently re-spool all your stuff up with your with noise line. Just you know peel out your bad stuff, get it all done because the season's here. And uh, put your high vis if you're liking the billfish only, get your high vis yellow in there. You can see where the fish is going to be moving, easier to track down on there. And if you're going to be chunking for meat fish or targeting some other stuff like that, I kind of use like smoke blue on that. I feel you get more hook sets like that if you're going for the tuna or anything else with has a bigger eye on it. And got a got a good picture of a, a good blue marlin here that was pushing some water. Beautiful picture, okay. Chad. Man, that looks like a really good fish. All right, bud. Thank you. Great reports. Time for the shallow sport. Boats, hot spots from the lower coast region. Chad says inshore fishing has been great in the North Land Cut. Throw mirror lure top waters early along the drop offs. And then offshore, fishing's good for the state water snappers and billfish out deep. Don't forget it, guys. Deep, deep. All right, we've got one more region to explore, which is the vast lower fresh region. Plus, we're doing a little shopping for new products at the workbench with Dave Farrell. Dave, what you got over there? I got a bunch of stuff. Got a I, got bunch a, of stuff? I got the best potato launcher ever made. Sweet, is that what it is? Yeah, that's what All right, it is. Are we going to talk, talk about, about it? The potato launcher. We're going to talk about it. Get it? We'll be back. <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Ameritrail. Load, launch, relax. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Diamond Fishing Products. Our reputation is on the line and StarTron, cures and prevents ethanol fuel problems. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four-strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock-solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. <laughs>
the only reel with over 100 years of heritage. Alvi reels are manufactured using the most reliable components. Alvi state-of-the-art drag and retrieve rates are perfect for any fishing challenge. So whether it's a side cast or spinning reel, Alvi makes a reel that best fits your needs. Alvi reels are manufactured to best practice standards and are in fact so robust that the Alvi also comes with up to a 10-year salt and sand warranty. For more information, go to alvus.com. So Dave, we're here at the workbench, time for some new products. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. We're gonna start with the Taco Grand Slam 390. It's really not a uh, potato launcher. It would make a great one though. Because <laughs> <laughs> I pull the pin. Yeah, you pull the pin. There's all kinds of little things on there. It it's pretty neat. Um, but it's really, it's a really heavy duty, robust outrigger system to go on your T-top. It's generally made for a big center console boat between 25 and 40 feet. You know, it's got that real thicker arm on it and a heavy gusset on the top up there. And what's really cool about it is, you know, it's got a, a lot of different locking positions in and out, but you can raise and lower it from downstairs too. You don't have to climb up on top. You don't have and, to get on the and, gunnel. And get it up to the height and use a little knob or knob. something. Exactly. You can Just stand down there and, and crank them up and down. No more getting on the gunnel. And you know, that's, it's really, it's got the, that's what's called the elevation crank. You know, you can deploy. I have these on the 35 Contender. Mm -hmm. Love them along with their graphite poles. Well, and it's we made, had it's them made on out the 32 of 32 as well. It's made out of cast stainless steel. So, you know, yeah. the thing is strong as can be. It's not going to bend or break on you. Very sleek looking. And it comes with a three year warranty as well. Ah, so, good job, Taco. Yeah, they taco. can go. To Grand Slam 390 GS. And then go to tacomarine.com. Right, there you go. Uh, next we got some Z-Man. This is the Chatterbait Freedom. It's a bladed football jig. Uh, you know, these bladed vibrating jigs are all the rage now. They make a lot of noise when you pu push that thing across, you know, re reeling it pretty heavy. Uh, it, it's got that football type jig on a swivel head so mm -hmm. that you get a lot of contact with the blade. It clickety, clickety, click. It's made out of tungsten. So, you know, it gives, it's, you know, it's molded from, I actually it's not tungsten, it's zinc. Molded from zinc, and it gives it a great, really nice sound and a really good durability. It's not like lead, it won't, it won't uh, crush, and if you throw it up against something, it won't dent like a, like a lead one will. So, mm -hmm. really, really nice. It's got the nice flipping, the Freedom hook on there. You can actually take that hook off. There's a way to get in there and get it off. I, I wouldn't do it now, because you'd probably stick yourself. Right. But it's got that swing hook. That's what it's called, the Freedom version, because the, the hook swings back and forth. And a good, good keeper, keeper. so you can you put can, on. You can put a, any kind of uh, creature bait, or just right. a plain worm, whatever you want to put on there, right. or just leave it plain. Right. It comes in a lot of different colors. You know, go to zman.com to get that. All Chatter, right. Chatterbait Freedom. What right. else you got for us, Well, Dave? these are a cool pro new product from Fish Bites. You know, we use a lot of fish bites in the surf and stuff around here, but this is their first product that can, it was made for fresh and salt water, actually. It, this was, are made to replace the old Uncle Josh pork rind. Correct. That we used to use, Correct. you know, and not the frog one, but the curly tail one. And these things are incredibly strong. They have, uh, but very, still very limber and, and and you can't break it, and they're still impregnated with all that good fish bite stuff. Right. For fresh water and salt water. So stuff, when stuff grabs on it, it's not gonna let go. You know, and it, you put those on any kind of jig, they just come, make a fish. Come in a, a variety they come, of colors. Swim, 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 swim. Exactly, they swim like crazy. So we can go to fishbites.com for that? Yep. Check There's eight out, baits guys. in a jar. You get eight baits in every That's jar. That's awesome. Yeah. And I love the fact that you Put it with the curl down. I learned that from Ralph Delph. What a great trick. Get curl down. Curl down. More it bites. swims better. Next and not least, because, you know, it's coming up on hurricane season and stuff, you know, this is our Startron enzyme fuel treatment. If you've got stuff laying around, your generators and all that stuff that you want to fire up, you know, once or twice a year, you want to make sure you got some Startron enzyme fuel treatment in there. It's, you know, concentrated marine formula. This this will treat up to 128 gallons of gas, one fluid ounce to 16 ounces of gas. It'll rejuvenate old gas. It keeps gas good for two years. You know, once you put it in there, you can't you can't overjuice it. You know, you yeah, can you put can't as much. Overdose. Nope, you can put as much as you want. It reduces smoke. It, uh, it it makes everything work better. It cleans out your whole fuel system. 
it's just a really good thing to put in your gas no matter what you're doing, but especially if you're putting something away for a little you while. You did a fine job tonight, Dave Farrell. Oh my goodness. He, he has earned his ching ching. His keep. <laughs> His yeah. keep keep. I yeah, would huh? say so. That's absolutely He's right. He's done a good job. All right. Well, last but not least, we're heading to our lower fresh region, checking out the bite on Choke Canyon, Fayette, Bastrop, Lake Travis, Decker, Buchanan, and of course, Amistad. Do what you do best, Matt, and get us excited for the weekend. Hi, right, this is Red Roll of the South Texas region. See how many lakes I can cover. Uh, starting out with the bass, Choke Canyon, the lake level is starting to drop slowly. Uh, fish is still really good. The hydrilla is growing quickly and forming, you know, mats all around the lake on the surface. Top water bite is good from daylight till about 7.30 or 8 o'clock. You know, it depends on the cloud cover and the wind to how long it lasts. The rest of the day, you want to target the outside grass lines, uh, especially where the wind's blowing into them. Throw a Texas rig, a soft plastic or a swim bait. Uh, Mike Bates he says the numbers have decreased a little bit, but he's still catching 20 or 30 a day. Uh, with some six or seven pounders mixed in, so it's been really good at choke. Uh, Fayette County, the deep water bite is good. Uh, 17 to 22 feet on the main lake points and ridges. Carolina rigs, stick baits, and trick worms in the green shades, green pumpkin or watermelon uh, have worked best. Uh, there's also some good fish starting to show up in the, in the hot water discharge there on the rock ledges that are in that discharge. Uh, Brian Cotter sent a report from the Austin area. Lake Travis is fishing really well. Uh, there's a good morning bite around the schooling bass. Uh, they're you know in the marinas and in pockets where there's got some some steep steep shore and cover. Uh, you want to throw a small swim bait uh, with a straight tail on a belly weighted hook. Just let it flutter down through the fish and they'll hit it on the fall. So pay attention. Set the hook when you see your line jump. Uh, top waters are working well, the poppers and walking style uh, around those school fish also. Later when the sun gets up, get you a Texas rig worm uh, out in that 15 to 25 foot on the deep ends of the points in the hump. Uh, and that's really been working best for the deeper fish. Lake Decker, uh, still going strong, starting off in the discharge, throwing at the schooling bass. Uh, again, you can throw a light swim bait, either in a clear or silver sparkle color for those school fish. Uh, later, you want to move out on the main lake reed edges for some good bites there in that heavy cover. Um, there's also some decent fish in the middle of the creek channels out offshore. Uh, you have to find those on your electronics, but when you do, they can be in a big group. Big buck cannon, starting to slow down a little bit, but there's still some big bass biting out on the long points and humps in the deeper rock piles. Uh, you want to throw a Texas rig worm, a deep crankbait, or a football jig out there uh, to try to catch you a big one. Early in the mornings there, there's still a little bit of a shad spawn, so you can catch those on rattle baits, spinner baits, or a, you know, a shallow running crankbait. Catch those when you do see a shad spawn in the mornings. Like Amistad, Amistad's been great. You know, water's in good shape. Uh, it's falling hard, but the hydrilla's growing well. Early in the morning, for about the first three hours, the top water bite has been great. Uh, you want to throw it around the grass points or the bluegill beds. Uh, either a walking style bait or a popper is, is, is working. You know, both of them are working fine. Uh, get a little light. You want to concentrate on the shallow grass at five foot or less with a fluke or a swim jig. Uh, that working good mid morning, and as the sun gets up, Move on out to the outside of the hydro edge in that six to 10 foot range. You throw a Texas rig, a Carolina rig, or a crankbait that, that just hits the grass. There's also some fish being caught off the deep points and ledges really deep on a drop shot or a football jig. Uh, average day, Rick Harris says he's catching 30 to 50 fish a day. Tell me Got about the crappies. There. Well, well, Rick, well, one of his pitcher. customers, pitcher it's first. always fun to see a young person with a big old fish in their hand. Yeah, Ooh, it is. All right, now let's go to the crappies, boss. All right, Falcon's still fishing great with a the crappie. They're in the brush piles in that 14 to 20 foot range. Get you an eight ounce jig. Uh, red and chartreuse is my favorite color, and it will get the job done. And Next cat. thing, we're going to talk about a little catfish. Uh, Ram Reds with Texas Kings Outdoors. He's killing the catfish right now. The river's up and running a little bit from the recent rains. Uh, the big blues are up the river. Uh, in about four foot of water, catching 20 to 30 pounders on cut gizzard shad. Uh, and that's a great bite right now. Got a picture there of one he caught 
this week with one of the customers, just a big old blue cat. Well, Matt, Thank you got it all in, man. I can't believe it. You really did it. You did I well. I can believe it. That's beautiful. He did very good. well. He had so much <laughs> stuff, I couldn't believe it. All right, lower hot spot, uh, lower fresh hot spots, Lake Amistad, the bass are biting top waters early around the hydrilla. Swim baits and swim jigs after the sun gets a little higher, you're gonna try that. And then later, move to the outside edges of the grass and throw Texas rigged big worms to continue getting a bite all day long. They like those all big worms. Day long. Like my singing? I okay, know. anyways, Go ahead. We're, we had a short week, right? But yeah. we have the weekend coming up. Yeah. Someone's birthday is coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited about it? Yeah. What do you think is going to happen for your birthday? Uh, hopefully some yes. some fishing. Yes. And what are you some fish for? sweet cake of some sort. Some sweet cake. Yeah. Some <laughs> not kind. birthday cake protein shake. No, no. No, no. Not no, birthday no. cake protein shake. <laughs> I'm I'm birthday cake and protein shaking until the sweet cake shows up for my birthday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll gain it all back. <laughs> yeah, then we're going to get it all back. All right, guys, thank Good you so much tonight, for tuning in. Go out and catch those fish. Send us your photos, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye, Dave.